We'll, we will now be opening God's word, preparing, to, preparing our hearts to remember Jesus by taking the Lord's Supper together. And it would be best if you had your own copy of the Bible so, so you can see God's words for yourself. We're going to be looking at Matthew 22, and if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand so that the men can put, put one in your hand. And if you don't own one, this is yours to keep. Just raise your hand if you need a Bible, and if you have one of your own, open up to Matthew chapter 22. We're going to be starting in verse 29. Matthew 22, verse 29. In this verse, in these verses, we see Jesus responding to a challenge by the Sadducees. The Sadducees were a Jewish sect. They were marked by a denial of the resurrection or afterlife. They claimed a devotion to the literal interpretation of the scripture, in particular the first five books of the Bible. But the Sadducees here join in with other groups trying to trap Jesus in his teaching. They tell a story that they think proves their point, that there can't be a resurrection of the dead. Jesus' response to their challenge is what we are going to focus on here today as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper. Jesus definitively declares that the Sadducees are wrong and that when we die, we don't stay dead. The Sadducees don't understand the scriptures that they claim allegiance to, and as a result, they don't truly know the God revealed in that word. Look at verse at 22, verse 29. Jesus says, you are mistaken, not understanding the scriptures, nor the power of God. And he moves on in verse 31, saying, as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Jesus points out he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Jesus quotes Exodus 3, 6, where God was actually revealing himself to Moses in the burning bush. And there, God spoke to Moses and said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Just quickly note in awe with me how Jesus describes the words recorded in that second book of the Bible. Look what he says. He says, Jesus said that these words were said to you by God. Speaking to the Sadducees, very much later. The Sadducees were obviously not there. God was talking to Moses, but the words recorded in the scriptures were spoken as if they were spoken to the hearers more than a thousand years later, two thousand years later. Do you want to hear God speaking to you? Have you ever wanted to hear God's words? He does speak to you through his words in the Bible. And when God reveals himself in his word, he is speaking to you directly, and you are responsible as if he had done so. The, Pharisees, or the Sadducees had God's word, and they didn't pay attention the way that they should have, and they were responsible, and therefore Jesus was able to say that they were wrong. The words of scripture are true. They are God's words, and they are to be taken as the word words of God's self-revelation to you. And if you want to know God, we must listen to these words carefully. But back to the point that God is the God of the living, not the dead. Jesus looks to the tense of the verb describing God's relationship to the patriarchs to make his point. God did not say, I was the God of Abraham, but I am the God of Abraham meaning that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had to be presently alive, though their earthly bodies clearly died. And God wasn't their God only while they lived in their earthly bodies. When God spoke to Moses, though Abraham, Isaac, Jacob's bodies were decomposed, they were probably no more. 
he could say, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, because they weren't gone. Death, therefore, is not the end of our existence. When we die, it is not the end. And for those who die in faith, God's Godship and his relationship to you, with him as your Savior and Lord, continues on into eternity. This life is an infinitesimally short period of your actual existence. And yet sometimes it feels like this is all that there is, all that there will be. Or at least it does when we don't lift the gaze of our hearts past our circumstances, past the trials or even the blessings of today and set our hearts on our eternal God and our eternity with him. We can often act like this is it. The Lord's Supper, where we take a piece of bread and a cup of juice to remember Jesus, it's a great time to get our eyes off of our circumstances, even while looking back 2,000 years to Calvary. Even while you do that, even while you look back, look forward to our resurrection life with him in eternity. Just a few chapters later in Matthew, while Jesus was instituting the Lord's Supper, he directs his disciples and us to look forward to the day when we would drink it again with him in his kingdom. Matthew 26, 28, he says, This cup is the blood of my covenant. 26, 28, This cup is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The Lord's Supper isn't only a reminder of Jesus' death for us, but it's an anticipation of the eternal life with him that that death on our behalf secured. The Lord's Supper isn't only a reminder of Jesus' death, but an anticipation of the eternal life with him that that death on our behalf secured. This eternal longing and perspective must have practical implications on your life. Here and now. Don't be a practical Sadducee by living like there isn't a resurrection. How must the perspective of eternity with God affect your life today? your prayers, your relationships, your priorities, your use of time, money, thoughts, efforts, the way you view your own death, the way we think about those who've gone before us. God is not the God of dead, but of living. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, Paul, Matt Dodd and probably us one day if he doesn't return first, when we will be in the grave. At least our bodies will, but we will be with him. So if you're a Christian, if you've trusted in Jesus alone to, for, to secure forgiveness of sins and eternal life with God, when the bread and juice comes, please take it, eat and drink on your own in remembrance and anticipation as your heart's prepared. And if you're not a Christian, let the bread and juice pass. But please let today be a sober warning that might shock you into repentance, into turning to God in faith. You see, even if you don't trust in God, even if you don't believe in him, even if like the Sadducees, you don't believe that you're going to be raised to eternal life or that you will, there's life after the grave, that doesn't make it not true. Reality is outside of your perception, outside of your belief. It is, there is a fundamental truth that all of us will continue to exist from now on into eternity. But where you exist, with whom you exist, whether it's eternal life or the second death, eternal punishment, has everything to do with whom you trust in this life. So I beg you, put your trust in Jesus. He is a trustworthy hope. He will forgive your sins. 
He will secure eternal life and you will get to be with him forever in heaven. It's not too late to hear God speaking to you, offering forgiveness, reconciliation, and eternal life. You don't get that through coming to church or doing religious things, but only through faith in him. I'll be at the information table after the service and would love to help you know how to put your faith in Jesus. But if you don't believe, let the bread and juice pass. Men, please serve us and take communion on your own in remembrance of Jesus and his death and in anticipation of the eternal life with him that his death secured.